Good evening, everybody. This is scholar and resident Sophia Nelson at Christopher Newport University. I wanted to do a video to follow up my open letter because I think it's important that you see me and you hear my voice in addition to the words that I've written to all of you this afternoon. Today is Friday, October 29th, 2021, and it is Halloween weekend. It's also homecoming weekend, and I hope everybody has a great homecoming and you get to reconnect with your family and former classmates and enjoy a good ball game and fellowship as Christopher Newport University students do. I wanna address you though, as a follow-up to my letter on a few things. First and foremost, I wanna to underscore to you that this has been a very difficult time. To say that I'm shocked, horrified, mortified, I don't think I have the words to explain to you what the last few weeks have been like. On October 14th, when I heard from my dean that there was an uproar on campus about a tweet that I had sent on October 11th, I was caught flat-footed. First, I had no idea what she was talking about. And then it dawned on me it had to be the tweet about the DC comic book character. I immediately went to the tweet, I reread it, and then the light bulb went off. Okay, I get it. That was insensitive. I need to remember that I'm not just an opinion writer. I'm not just a pundit. I'm also now an academic professor and scholar. And I need to make sure that all of my students know that I love them, that I care about them, that I'm there for them. And so I immediately told my dean without her having to ask me anything or command me to do anything, which she never did, and I made clear that I was going to do three things. I was going to take the tweet down. Secondly, I was going to apologize, which I did immediately, not once, but twice. And then I made sure that the students knew in a follow on tweet that I was going to come to campus immediately. I was ready to drive down in my car, in fact, that day or the next day. But the reality is, is that Dean Underwood and our diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, Dr. Angela Springer, were immediately on board and excited for us to have a forum. We thought it would be a great teachable moment for our campus community and for our community writ large. We thought it would be important for us to be able to sit and hear and listen and talk and engage in dialogue around something that all of us are struggling with right now on college campuses throughout the United States of America. These are challenging times for all of us. The, 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 the limits of free speech and free thought and academic freedom and what am I allowed to say or what should I say? And just because I can say it, should I say it? All of those things are debates that we should have. I was looking forward to that as my letter makes clear. And through a trial of errors and things that just didn't line up right and then this matter blew up and it kept blowing up and it was stoked up. And the next thing you know, we had a full-blown mob. And I'm using that word intentionally because our honor code at Christopher Newport University is clear. The freedom of speech statement is clear about how we conduct ourselves when we have difference, differences of opinion, difference in that we may look different, we may come from different places, we may come from different regions, we may come from different faith backgrounds, but we find a way to be honorable and we find a way to dialogue. Candidly speaking, I was not given that opportunity at all. Full stop. For weeks, I've had to sit in silence as there have been forums that I tried to participate in but was told that I couldn't, where there have been meetings for faculty of which I should be a part of, but I wasn't allowed to participate. I was told that I needed to wait to get to campus because that was the best way to communicate with all of you. I disagreed then, I disagree now because I'm in the communications business and I'm pretty effective at it. And I knew that I needed to get to you, the student body, immediately as well as to the faculty and staff to address these concerns in a thoughtful, respectful, and earnest way. And that was my intention. But what happens, as I said in my letter, when we operate from a place of being offended, 
Nothing good is ever going to come from it. And that is exactly the result of this situation. Those who were hurt, offended, and pained by a tweet that asked a question and that dealt clearly with the over-sexualization from my point of view as a person of faith, of children, whether it be heterosexual, homosexual, non-sexual, Christian, whatever, any fair reading of my tweets, and it is clear that that's exactly what I said. And that I made clear on that thread on October 11th, the day it was actually coming out day, that I, Sophia Nelson, deplore homophobia. That it's not good and that I would work with anybody to work against it. It's all there in black and white. Yet, Dr. Danielle Stern and her team went to work on me fast. They first made sure that they tweeted me that they were disappointed and upset and wanted to dialogue. Folks, I have 80,000 followers. I do not always see people's responses to me, particularly on a hot button topic. I missed that tweet because I would have engaged it. And then the next thing I know, I'm getting emails from our chief diversity officer. And she's having to respond to complaints and upset. And then it keeps getting bigger and bigger and I'm not getting to campus and I'm not talking and everybody's talking. And then the faculty Senate is meeting and the faculty Senate had this thing figured out. We were going to have a forum. We were going to deal with it. I was going to come down and all was well. That was October 15th. And then the missive came again from Dr. Danielle Stern and the Department of Communications in the College of Social Sciences which frankly I am deeply disappointed in and offended by the conduct because that department has a lot of nerve to lecture people on diversity, equity, and inclusion when it is not a diverse department. That's not me making it up. Check your facts. So if you're going to preach inclusion and diversity and if you're going to attack people for their thoughts and for their speech and hold them accountable, then you too must be held accountable. And you will be. I've been sick. I had to have surgery. You didn't know that. And it wasn't something I wanted to broadcast, but it's been on my Twitter feed. I am still recovering from major surgery. It hasn't been easy to be ill and to have to go in the hospital and be sick. And come home and have reporters blowing your phone up. To have people calling you from all over asking you what's happening. Why are they calling you homophobe? Why are they calling you transphobe? Why are they calling you bigot? Why are they calling you racist in a petition? Shame on whoever. Whoever came up with that petition in that language. Shame on you. How dare you call me or my statements racist? Do you even know what racism is? Because I do. As a black woman, I've lived it every day of my life. The microaggressions, the marginalizations, and everything I talked to you about in my letter. That's my every day. You talk to me about violent words and being unsafe. It is me who is unsafe on that campus. Me. That's why I won't come to that campus. Because you can't have petitions where a thousand people who've never met me, never talked to me, and don't know me have signed on to a document that accuses me of racist and homophobic speech. I don't know what's going on there, but it's not healthy. And it's not normal. And it's not good. And it is not in the spirit of free speech or of academic freedom. Yes, I am angry. And I have a right to be angry because I've been bullied for weeks. I've got nasty gram emails told to piss off. Told we want you to leave. Told that I have no honor. Told that I betrayed myself as a black woman. Lectured by a 20-something young white woman that has no clue on any day what it's like to be a woman of color in America. All the issues that Dean Underwood and I had set out in this academic year to address in our new Women's Institute of Policy, Race, and Gender, it would have been a preeminent, first-of-its-kind institute. We had interested donors, a multi-million dollar comprehensive campaign. 
that we have been working on for the last year. It would have put CNU on the map in a completely different way. And it is done now. It is over. It is finished. Thanks to Dr. Danielle Stern and those like her who had an agenda that I knew nothing about. I walked into a landmine. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And yet in the faculty meeting yesterday, the one that, again, I wasn't allowed to participate in while people talked bad about me. You know that people text, right? You know that people take audio snippets, right? And send them to you. That's the world we live in. How naive to think I wouldn't hear about what was going on at that meeting. And I was appalled. People asking about my credentials and what are they? You don't know? I hold a Juris Doctorate degree from a top law school. I hold a bachelor's degree in political science, economics, women's studies, and African-American studies. Four of them, count them. I'm the author of three best-selling books, one of them nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. I have won awards as a diversity champion in corporate America. I've won awards in journalism and everything I've ever done. And most of the time, I've been the first person that looks like me to walk through the door. But yet you ask what my credentials are? That's racist in and of itself. Shame on you. And then you attack. One of the best assets that the institution at Christopher Newport has. Dean Underwood. She doesn't know I'm doing this video. She doesn't know I'm saying this. And she would probably be mortified. I don't care. It's time for the truth to be told. It's time for the other side of this to come out. Dean Underwood is respected by the black community in the Newport News area, in the Hampton Roads area. She is liked and she is trusted. I have been on the phone with people who are professors, administrators, and leaders at every HBCU in the Commonwealth of Virginia, has outreached to me and said, what in the hell is going on down at Christopher Newport? What are they doing to you? And we've talked, and they've asked how they can help, and they all talk about Lori Underwood and the kind of human being she is and how she has opened doors at a school like ours that has not traditionally been that open. It's not a diverse school. We have work to do, and that's what we were committed to doing, and we were excited about doing it. I can't tell you how heartbroken I am. I am devastated that this is the outcome, that when I Google my name now, it has homophobe, anti-gay, racist attached to it. I can never get that off, ever. It's stuck with me. A 30-year stellar career. Hard. No privilege here. No entitlement here. I'm a working class kid. I worked hard for everything I got. There were no family connections. There was nobody to open a door for me. And this is, this is how I go out? Because some students got offended and upset and hurt and demanded that I be disciplined, that I be put in my place, that I be condemned. Well, let me say this about that. The letter that President Tribble sent out, he's the president of the university. He has every right to say what he wants. But that letter was never run by me because if it were, I would have told him it was awful. And it was awful. It was awful because in the opening three words, I was in it. There was no balance to it. There was no, no, nothing other than condemnation for my words saying that I caused great damage around here. No, I did not. I didn't damage anyone. I asked a question on Twitter. And you don't get to say that I intentionally went about to hurt people, to, to tear up the university, uh, things that were said in the meeting that I'm dangerous and, and somebody should have checked out my tweets. Folks, where have you been? I've been a national media pundit now for the better part of 15 years. If you didn't know what I thought, what I said, what I wrote, you're not paying attention. And it is not on Dean Underwood or Angela or anybody else at that campus to take responsibility for my tweet or my words. That's on me. Me. Me alone. And no one else should be berated for it or mistreated over it. It should not exist. That is not honor. That is not a community. That is not how you treat people.
Like I said, when people lead in offense and you lead with anger and you lead with hurt feelings, you're never going to have the outcome that you want. You're going to do damage to other human beings. You're going to hurt careers. You're going to ruin reputations because you got mad and because you got hurt. If you wonder why our country is divided as it is and why this Virginia election is as close as it is and, 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 and why we are in the place that we are in, this right here is a perfect example of why. Somebody saw me, that somebody, that they caused some hurt and pain. I immediately went about to fix it and I immediately wanted to address it and I immediately was looking for it with excitement to sitting with you on the great lawn and fellowshipping and talking. I plan to buy everybody a cup of coffee or whatever they wanted on me. And we just sit there and we talk all day. Whatever you needed, I wanted to give it to you. Instead, I have an angry mob after me. And that's what has happened. It is a mob. And once the mob gets whipped up and once the mob needs its pound of flesh, it doesn't know how to stop itself. And that's the real tragedy of this. You know, I know something about gender and equity and race. I do. I may not have an Ivy League degree and I may not be a PhD like Dr. Stern and others like her who think that in their elitism and their wokeism, that they're the only ones who can tell the rest of us how to live, how to think, what to say, what not to say, and that they're the ones that should run everything. I don't want to know people like that. I don't want to know people that like to write open proclamations and letters, blasting their colleagues, condemning them, attacking their faith. I don't want to know people like that. I don't. And I'm just being real with you because this generation prides itself, my students, on being real. You like to keep it real. So I will. Just as you say I'm accountable for my words and actions, and I am, so are you. And you've treated me unfairly. You've treated me unkindly. You've not treated me in the spirit of community, in the spirit of reconciliation, in the spirit of let's move forward together as fellow human beings. You use terms like your words are violent. And I'll tell you what a violent word is. A violent word is when you're called the N-word every day in your Twitter inbox or in your Facebook inbox or in an email calling you a NB and all kind of foul, vulgar things. The N word is one of the most violent words America has in her collective lexicon. It is a word that most of us as black people live with all the time because we can be called it at any moment. Just like if I get stopped at a traffic stop and the police officer doesn't like something I do, my life could be over. And we know that that happens every day. There's no white person walking that has to fear that. That's uniquely for African Americans in this country. So please stop your lectures, Daniel Stern. Stop your lectures to me about what it means to be marginalized and what it means to be treated less than and to be unseen and to be treated hostily and with no respect. Because no Christian I've ever known, no Christian professor, no Christian thought leader I've ever known has ever been able to get an LGBTQ plus person fired, removed from their job, silenced, thrown out of a place, shamed. We don't do that. We don't play that way. None of the rest of us do that. And that's why this is such an ugly, horrible, hurtful moment. You want my head on a platter. You want me fired. You want me put out. That'll be up to the university to do that. That's up to them. But I won't quit because I'm not a quitter. And that's not my life. And that's not who I am. Now, how this all plays out, we'll have to see. But what I can tell you is that we are now the next campus in the national media, and thank you to that protest, this is spilled into the media, and I've been on defense, but I'm going to go on offense. Because I'm not going to be defined by you. I'm not going to be labeled a bigot or a homophobe or a transphobe or a racist. Because I'm none of those things. 
I'm not going to allow you to do what you've done to too many people, which is to ruin lives, ruin careers, run people out of spaces, say that they shouldn't be allowed to speak and be heard. How dare you? You don't have that right to do that to any of us. And I would never do it to you, ever, because it's despicable. Yes, like I said, I am angry. And if that fits your stereotype, you sit with that. I don't need lectures from the likes of Danielle Stern and others on what it means to be a woman and a woman of color and a person, like I said, who is marginalized. I do know. No, I do not know what it's like to be LGBTQ+. I don't, but I want to know. And as I outlined in my letter that went to the campus that I taught, I started to do the work because apologies are meaningless if we don't do the work. And I wanted to do the work. I wanted to fellowship, to learn and build this great women's institute into something amazing. This experience could have turned out so differently for all of us. It could have been the best, most amazing teachable unity moment Christopher Newport ever had and we could have written the playbook for the rest of America for Yale for MIT and all the schools that are struggling with this and running professors out and limiting speech and getting sued and having student unions sued and having people replaced and having people moved and having people fired is that who you want to be that's not who you want to be we have failed you I have failed you and your professors have failed you in these last three weeks. Do you know how? Because we didn't lead by example. We didn't teach you that conflict resolution is the way. That love is the way. That courageous conversation is the way. No, what we taught you was you get angry, you get offended, and you get your torches, and you go after people. And you assert your rights over somebody else's rights. And you decide that your rights are superior to everyone and everything else. And that gives you the right to label them and define them and demean them. That's wrong. We failed you if that's the lesson. Because that is not how life works. I promise you. You're not going to be able to protest at your job. You're not going to be able to get angry and have so-and-so in a cubicle down over there that you don't like. Who's a white nationalist. Or who's somebody who's got a big Trump sticker and you don't like that. You're not going to be able to get them fired. It doesn't work that way. We have failed you. Now, I'm going to end with this. Like I said, I got a lot of support over these last three weeks too. But it was silent support and that disappointed me. To the faculty members who've DM'd and who've emailed and who've done all you've done and told me how much you support me, but you're afraid. Shame on you. Because today it's me. And tomorrow it's you. That's real. Today it's me. Tomorrow you say the wrong thing. And they come for you. So I'm sorry to my students who reached out and thought there would be dialogue. And who were looking forward to it. And who said you wanted to stand up for me, but you were afraid. Because see, when the mob gets whipped up, we're afraid. And those of you who are in the thick of this right now, you don't see yourself as the mob. You see yourself as a victim. I'm nobody's victim and I'm not going to be your victim at all. There will be an accounting for what's been done here. You can count on that. It's not a threat. That's a promise. There's no way a woman like me, as accomplished as I am, who's done all I've done in my life, is going to allow a university students or faculty or whoever to beat on me the way you have for almost three weeks non-stop every day call me names shun me want me banished do what you've done and you think I'm just gonna take it lying down that's not who I am and it's time that this stops because I don't want anybody ever I don't care what their race is their gender is their sexual orientation is I don't want anybody to ever be treated like this again because it was destructive. Nothing good is going to come out of this. At least not in the short term. So I wanted to just address you. I wanted to amplify my letter. Which was probably much nicer and more thoughtful. Because I'm a writer. But you need to also hear my heat and my passion. Because I have been muted. And I haven't been able to talk. And I made the decision with my security. With my family. Who has been through hell because of this. They don't want me anywhere near the campus. 
They don't think I'm safe. There are very serious concerns about my safety, given the emails and some of the stuff that you students and faculty have not seen. It's been a rough few weeks. And I'm glad that at least you heard from me now. You've got a letter. You've seen me. There's the podcast on the One America podcast. And you'll be hearing a lot more from me soon, next week. A lot. Because this is an issue now that I'm going to take up as a cause with others who are already in the fight. And we're going to make sure that nobody ever gets treated like this again. Listen. Again, to my students from Legal Reasoning, I love you. I'm proud of you. Thank you for still allowing me to write letters of recommendation for you, as well as to help you get internships and whatever you need. Thank you for not walking away from me. Thank you that you knew me because you know me. And that includes transgender and LGBTQ students who I have had, who I treat the way I treat everybody else, who got top grades in my class. Great kids. Love them. So I'm not this monster that they've made me out to be because they got offended by a tweet that had absolutely nothing to do with Christopher Newport University. You should ask the school's general counsel to give an opinion on this and find out what he or she has to say. Because what they will tell you is, what they will tell you is, is that it was not only protected speech, it had absolutely nothing to do with Christopher Newport University. It was brought there by an offended professor who self-identifies as a bisexual woman, and that is fine. But she put that out there. She dragged this into the college campus and none of us have had peace since. And for whatever reasons, beyond my wildest understanding, this was allowed to go on and on and on and on. And not one person stood up publicly and defended me and my rights as the first black female scholar that Christopher Newport has ever had. Instead, thank you for the gift of now being called a bigot anti-gay, homophobic, transphobic, and worse, that's now my legacy. That's now what I'm stuck with.